Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. So excited you're joining me today in my studio for our crafty fun. My name is Wendy Lee from creativelyyours.com and we are going to do a nice celebration card today. Always need something for celebrating, right? Birthdays, anniversaries, a little late for graduation, but you never know. Somebody could be graduating a different time of year. Um, so we are going to have a fun time doing that today. A couple reminders. Um, registration is going on for the Cardapalooza class. So that is a 10 card class. You can have the option to double it to 20 if you want to make two of each design. Um, and we're I'm working with the Makers Mojo design team on that one. And um, they are going to be fabulous. Easy, but not, right? Like we're featuring the bright and beautiful memories and more card pack and envelopes. And, but they're not your regular, you know, simple, simple cards. They, they have luscious layers. There's fun folds, there's shakers. You can see two kind of behind me. Yes, hanging up. I don't have them all made yet, but I've got my two up there. Um, but I hope to have the others in the next couple of days so that I can give you guys sneak peeks. But registration closes on that one on August 12th. Bright and beautiful. Loving that suite. We're going to feature that today. That is the new all-star tutorial video class tutorial bundle. Ah, can't say that right. So that one's available as well. It's $15 or free. Get it free with a $50 uh, minimum purchase. And don't forget to redeem your bonus days coupons. If you shopped uh, during July from Stampin' Up, you um, may have earned bonus day coupons and you can redeem those in August. Don't lose them. Redeem them in August, right? And then we have a kit sale going on now up to 30% off and there's a brand new kit collection that was added. So many exciting things going on. First of the month, there's always lots and lots of going on. And uh, I am working on getting all of that updated, right? Uh, I have a new exclusive tutorial bundle to go out to my email subscribers. It'll go out this week as well. So many things. All right, let's switch the camera over and get to our crafty fun. All right. Hopefully that will switch over. Maybe. Hmm. There we go. Quite the delay today. Mm -mm -mm. All right. So as I mentioned, we are going to feature the bright and beautiful uh, stamp and die bundle today. So this is the um, suite that we are featuring in the all-star tutorial, as I had mentioned. And then we're also featuring, while we won't be using this stamp set in the Cardapalooza class, um, you will be uh, creating from products from the suite, if that makes any sense, and the card, card kits that match. Okay, what are we making? We are making this super cute. I love it, love it, love it little gift card holder. So this is the flat, a flat card, right? And then this is the part that opens. And so we've got a little pocket on the inside. We've got our little gift card. Um, love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So let's go ahead and do this one. And I am really loving this, all the great prints that are in this bright and beautiful um, designer series paper pack. It's a six by six paper pack. And um, you know, you can, you can choose a print that's going to give you What's the best way to say? It's going to let you adjust it so that if you want it more masculine, you can use prints that are more masculine. If you want it a little more feminine or gender neutral, like to me, this is completely gender neutral. Um, so it could go for a guy or a gal, right? Good, good, good. Hey, good, good to see you, Susan and Jean. So if you're here, say hello. I'd love to, love to say hello to you. So let's get started on this one. So we're gonna start off with our card base. And like I said, this is a flat uh, four and a quarter by five and a half thick white, right? So I'm going to lay this down on my grid paper. I'm going to use my grid paper as a little bit of a guide. I forget to do that because I've been doing this for so long that I don't even think about using my grid paper as a guide, which is a really great idea. So we're going to save a little paper. We're going to do our cheater method where we're using some scraps of our designer paper pack versus using a full strip all the way across the layer because we're going to cover a lot of it anyway right so i like to i'm actually going to flip this on the side i will do better if it's if it's flipped to the side 
So I am going to lay this down. I might be centered. I might not be centered. I'm going to eyeball it. But my hope is, is that when I do the other side, I can line it up on the same grid lines. So then it is nice and straight, right? That is the plan. Perfect. So there are our strips right there. Now I will have um, the complete supply list. You can just click on the links, jump on in, purchase whatever supplies you want. And then I'll also have the cut dimensions. So I've got both metric and imperial today uh, that I will upload. Now it's going to take me a little bit because I, like I said, I'm behind a little bit today. So um, it'll take me a little bit to get all that updated after the video. I'll try to get the... Um, I will try to get the uh, supplies and cut dimensions in right away, but it might take me a little bit to get the cover photo and all that goodness all worked out. Okay, so this is really kind of, well, it's not my card base, it's the functioning of the card. So this piece is, uh, I believe it's three inches by 10 and a half, and we're going to score it at one and a half and six, okay? So you can turn anything into a gift card holder by adding a pocket. And that's exactly what we're doing. I'm going to move the grid paper. I don't think I need it again for a little bit. All right. So I'm going to fold this card base. Whoa, as my bone folder jumps across the room. And then I'm going to fold this up for my pocket. Now, I'm going to close this pocket because a gift card is pretty close to the width of what I'm doing, right? So let me grab one here so I can show you what I mean. So there's not a ton of extra room over here. So if you want to use tear and tape or stamp and seal and you wanna stay really close to the edge, you can definitely do that. It will work on this. It'll make it a little tight, but it will work. I'm going to use just some liquid glue. I'm gonna do a thin line just right on those edges. So again, you do what makes you happy. I'm doing this first because I want this to have a chance to dry. Hey, Sandra, so glad you're here as well. Perfect. So I'm just going to fold that up, let that sit for just a moment. Now, I've got a piece of designer series paper that I'm going to put on that pocket. So I can go ahead and put that down. So it's my coordinating paper. You could um, switch to a different print in the pack if you wanted to. I'm, I've chosen to do the same print that I put on the front. And I'm just going to center it top to bottom and it's going to go all the way to the edges on both sides. Now I'm going to work on the front of the card and we'll come back, but I want to slide my bone folder down in that pocket and kind of loosen that a little bit because it makes it easier to put your um, your gift card in there or your, you know, whatever you want to put in there. You could put a flat candy. You could put a, another little card. You could put cash. Who doesn't want cash, right? All right. So let's go ahead and adhere this right to our card front. And I am just going to center this more or less. Okay. Hard part's over, right? All right. Let's grab, so I've got my basics 3D embossing folder and I've run this through the machine. And it puts this fabulous polka dot print. Now, I purposely left that crooked versus trying to line it up. I thought it looked a little um, more haphazard. And since my layer was small enough to do that, um, I chose to do that at an angle. You can do what makes you happy. The Basics 3D embossing folders come with three different folders in the pack. Um, there's this lovely polka dot, which I will say is my favorite. It's got so much dimension to it. It's just fantastic. Um, so we'll have that. And then there's one that's kind of a hatch looking. And then there's one that has um, kind of a florally, it sort of flowers. I don't know. It's a geometric shape that kind of reminds me of flowers. How about that? Okay, we're going to set this aside for a bit while we do some stamping. So I want to stamp, let's get my foam pad if I can find it, if I haven't buried it alive, I did, there it was. I'm gonna get my foam pad out since we're using photopolymer. Um, this will give me a nice cushion since I'm using a fairly large stamp. So I'm gonna start off with my lightest color because I'm using the same stamp and I am gonna clean it in between, but I find that if I start with my lightest color first, I have a little less ink transfer. So we're gonna do a lemon lolly. So vibrant and fun. 
And then I've got my scrub and mist behind me that I am going to clean my stamps with in between each color. I prefer the scrub and mist. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is our stamp and scrub. And you mist one side with the cleaner, which is this one. I have an old bottle that I just keep refilling. It comes in a much larger container these days. So I'm just gonna clean it on one side, dry it on the other, fast and easy. And then let me stamp off on a scrap because I want to make sure I'm not getting any halo of color as I move on to each color, right? All right, let's do some lemon lime twist. Another fabulous color. So this was a returning color. I'm gonna put that on there. Now this, this image is also great if you wanted to use a stamp positioning tool. So if you wanted a little, um, sometimes you can get a little more even color because you can stamp it more than once. I, I kind of like the variation and how this turns out with this particular image because it's a balloon, right? But you can do what makes you happy. But this would be a good one to put because it's such a solid image, be a good one to put up on your stamp positioning tool so that you could restamp that multiple times. All right, and then my blue. So I've got those three balloons. Yes, 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 yes. All right, now I wanna stamp a couple of balloon strings in my memento blocking. So I really only need two, even though I've got three balloons because one of them you're not gonna see at all by the time I get my layers all stacked up. I don't need to worry about it. Okay, let's bring in our dies that I had buried. Now I'm gonna use this die to cut out the balloons. There is not a die to cut out the string, but I want them cut out because I, I like, you know, I could have stamped right on that layer before I textured it, but I kind of like it hanging off the edge. And I, to me, it gives it a little more dimension. So I'm gonna fussy cut that. So we're gonna go run this through the machine and we will run it through three times to get all three balloons. I've got those, perfect. And then we could start layering these right on that card base, but we need our strings. So let's fussy cut these out. So they're not too bad to cut out. I'm gonna go ahead and just clip them out of this bigger piece. That way I don't have to mess with the big piece in our way. And I am just going to, now when I fussy cut, I like to go deep into the scissor, right? And I like to move my paper and kind of not, well, obviously I'm gonna move my scissor some, but I like to move my paper versus my scissor. I get a much better cut, but I think each person has to practice and do what works for them, right? Hey Connie, so glad you're here as well. So you can cut it really super close or you can leave as much white as you want. Um, to me, it doesn't bother me to have all this extra white because it's gonna give it a little more stability. And since I'm putting the loop to loo down, I will clip that a little nicer. So I am not the best at fussy cutting, I'll admit that because I don't love to fussy cut, but I will say there's a time and place for it, right? There's sometimes you just need that image cut out and I kind of go in phases with it as well. How about you guys? Do you like fussy cutting? Yes, no? Big fan, not a fan? Some people find it super relaxing and some people it makes very cranky. <laughs> I think I have my moments of both, right? Well, I don't know if it's ever super relaxing for me. Okay, so I've got my little strings. So I know I'm gonna put my, um, lemon lime twist down low. So I'm going to go ahead and put that string up a little ways on the back here because I um, I don't want it to hang off the bottom of my card. So I'm gonna put that little string right on the back there. And then this one's gonna end up being popped up. I'm gonna go ahead and put dimensionals because I've got a glue mask down there, right? Now that I just put my stamp and seal. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my dimensionals. I'm not gonna pick them off just yet, the backings, but at least this is gonna keep it from sticking to my table. All right, and then I want to put one on the back of my yellow. 
balloon as well. And this one I'm gonna leave a little bit longer because I've got the space on my card to do so. All right, now I'm not gonna leave this upside down so it doesn't stick to the table. I could pull out my handy dandy silicone craft sheet. Oh yeah, you, you pull in your scan and cut and do the fussy cutting. Yes, that is a great way to do it as well. My mat is a little uh, not tacky enough, so I can't do small pieces currently. All right, here we go. So let's put our balloons on. I'm gonna use liquid glue on this. And the reason I'm using liquid glue, two things, the shape, right? Anytime I'm dealing with a circular shape, it's a little easier with liquid glue. Plus I have huge texture. I mean, this embossing folder, hopefully you guys can see that. It has got so much texture to it. And so I find that the liquid glue is a great way to go for that. So I'm gonna put some on there. Now, when I place this, I don't wanna cross the top here because I need to be able to open this. So I'm gonna put it over to the right, but I really wanna make sure that I don't interfere with this card being able to open. So that's why I'm not crossing this top threshold. Threshold, Blah. normally I would, totally would do it. All right, so now I'm gonna put some liquid glue on this balloon. I'm not gonna put it on the string. I don't think it's necessary. All right, perfect. Now this one, I can have hang off as much as I want. My only issue is, is I put glue pretty far over. So, and I don't want it to stick to the other part of the card, right? So I don't wanna to go too far out. Let's see how I did. Oh, I did all right. Perfect. All right, so we got that one on there. And then we're gonna put this lemon lime twist one on with our dimensionals. I'm not pop it up too bad, right? Sometimes I'm a little crazy on my pop-ups. I, I was a little more uh, subdued today. There we go. All right, let's work on our sentiment next. So I've got a little strip of black cardstock and we're gonna pull back in our foam pad. And let's grab our embossing buddy. So this is gonna keep all those oils, the, the stamped image from sticking, right? To where, where I've touched the cardstock and yeah, just gets it all nice and clean and ready to go. Let's pull in our Versamark pad and our sentiment that we're gonna do. And hopefully I'll be able to see this. I may not be able to see this. All right, it looks like I cut this really long. Let's see, let's see what my measurement said. My measurement said three and five eighths. Let's see if this is longer than three and five eighths. It isn't, so I, I guess I just left it really long. Well, we can chop it off after. I may have left it long um, because it's easier to hold on when you're embossing. So I'm just gonna move this over to the side. Hopefully I didn't get a halo because I was hovering. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna redo. Flip it over, try again. This is why we have two sides. I think I need that scrap paper under there. I'm having trouble seeing it versus the pad. Let's do that. Try that again. We all make mistakes, right? And we'll pick the side that turns out better. See if I can get up in here and see a little bit better. Okay, maybe I did better on that one. We'll find out, right? Okay, let's put our Versamark away so that we don't get embossing powder in it. That's no fun. And then I've got my white embossing powder. Now this is gonna to stick to both sides where I mess up the stamping on the back, but that's okay. All right, so my front one looks really pretty good. Let's flip over. Yeah, let's just brush that away. We don't need it. doesn't hurt anything, but why waste the powder, right? Okay, hmm. I kind of messed up the front. Let's try again. I'm gonna maybe have to leave it on the back. All right, we're going with that. I'm not even gonna flip it over and see what it looks like. Okay, so maybe I don't need my tweezers. I brought my tweezers just in case. We'll pull them in. Why not? Keeps our hands from burning. So I'm gonna turn on my heat tool off camera and let it warm up a little bit. Okay. And of course, I have an old, old, old heat tool. You guys know this, I think. I've had it forever. It's stamping up, but it's from decades ago. And it still works. Cute, cute, cute. All right, so I have a nice embossed sentiment here. 
Now you could, this next part, you can use your snips or you can use your paper trimmer. I'm gonna bring in my trimmer just because I do a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and crop this. So I've got it a little long. So I think that I think that three and five eighths probably was needed to be two and five eighths. Yeah, two and five eighths would have fit perfect, but it's it might've been a little bit close to hold on to and stamp. So I think that's why I did that. So we're just gonna cut that off. Hopefully I'm in camera and you guys can see me. So I've cut that off. Now I wanna cut these sentiments apart. I'm gonna use my trimmer. You don't have to, you could use your paper snips and do it, but I want this straight. Now it's gonna cut off that F a little bit and that's okay. You don't really see it. So now I've got this cropped into two pieces. That one's good. I wanna shorten this one a little bit. So I'm gonna take a quarter off each end and make this one just a smidge shorter. So again, you could do all this with your um, snips. You don't have to do it with your paper trimmer, but it's a little faster for me and I, I do a better job. So when I can use my paper trimmer, I do. All right, moving that out of my way. Ready to put these on my card. All right, so the inside, let's go ahead and do the inside first. So this should be dry enough. I can stick my bone folder down in this pocket and kind of loosen that pocket a little bit. So that is going to allow that to bow up some, so it'll be easier to put my gift card in there. Let me grab a gift card again, slide that right down in, easy peasy. And then we will use a little liquid glue on our sentiment here. And that's just gonna go right on the pocket. You can do it differently if you prefer, but that's what I'm doing. Okay, and then we're gonna put this one on the front. So I'm only gonna put glue on one little end here. I want it enough that it's going to hold in place, but I don't want it to show. And I like to have it cross over the layers, but I do need it to stay inside the out outer edge of my card base so that I can pop this in the mail without any issues. Hopefully that's straight. Looks straight from my angle. Let's see, what are you guys talking about? Oh, you learned to embrace fussy cutting. Good for you, Jean. Yes. Oh, it, okay. For you, for you guys that are talking about the scan and cut, so that is not a Stampin' Up! product. Um, mine is by Brother. I don't know if there's other brands out there. There probably are. Um, but I think the scan and cut itself is by Brother. There is a uh, lady on YouTube that I highly recommend if you're trying to learn the scan and cut. It's the um, paper, pampered paper. I'd have to Google her. I'll, I'll, I'll check here in a moment. Um, but she is, she's got great videos on using it. Um, and that's how I, that's how I started. I found her videos really nice and easy to use. Pampered paper, pampered chef, maybe, mm, not sure. Okay, Tinsel Gems four pack. Love, 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 love. Looks like I got one that jumps ship. There you go. So I'm gonna use this. And while the colors may or may not be the same exact colors, um, I think it's okay to mix and match that up a little bit, right? So I'm gonna put this little blue one right here, grab one of the yellow ones, and then let's grab a pink one. I'm gonna get a big pink one this time. <laughs> Cute. I just think that brings in a nice little sparkle. Goes well with my colors. Do you guys like it? Easy one, right? Super fast and easy. So you can make a stack of these in no time. Could change your focal point, make them for any occasion. It's just a super easy way to turn a card into a gift card. Papered Chef. Thank you, Sandra. Yes. Papered Chef. She is, um, her videos on the scan and cut. I find very easy to use. So I highly recommend uh, checking her out. All right, perfect. Yay, 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 yay. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. If you're enjoying the content, please give me a thumbs up. Share it with your crafty friends and have them join us on Tuesdays. Have a little fun with us, right? All right, I will hopefully see you all again next Tuesday. Have a fantastic week. And if you've got any questions, Leave me a comment and I'll make sure to answer them.